Good afternoon, horse lovers. I'm Sherilyn Markison from the Marina Equestrian Association, and I'm here with my 25-year-old Arabian mare named Jewel. And today we are going to talk about the parts of a Western saddle. And then if we have time, I'm going to tack her up and show you how to tack up a horse to ride. So first, let's start by describing some of the parts of the saddle. So so this is a typical Western saddle, and something that lets you know it's a Western saddle is this right here, which is a saddle arm. So when you look at saddles, you might see some English saddles and some Western saddles. This is definitely a Western saddle. And I'm gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the parts of the Western saddle. And so we already introduced, this is the saddle horn. Um, if a horse takes off on me, I can grab onto that and I have something to hold on to. But that's not really what it's for. It was for Western riders, cattle ranchers, they might need to tie a rope to a calf and onto the saddle horn. So that's what this purpose is really for. Um, this right here is called the pommel of the saddle. And I don't know if you can see right here, but in between the pommel, this is the gullet. And sometimes you need different size gullets for different size horses, depending on their backs and the height of the riders. Coming down the saddle, this area right here is called the jockey. And here we have the fenders. And this is where your leg lies. And probably you guys know what these are called. These are the stirrups. These are where your feet go. And moving back. On this side, this is called an off billet. Sometimes it's called a cinch tie. And when I go to saddle jewel, I'll show you how the cinch connects to the off billet. So you'll be seeing a demonstration of that in just a moment. This back strap of leather is called the rear cinch or the rear rigging. And this is the skirt of the saddle. This right here is the cantle, and some saddles have a higher cantle, some have a lower cantle, depends on what you're more comfortable with and what you're gonna be riding, what kind of discipline or what kind of riding you're gonna be doing, whether it's trail riding or whether it's chasing cows. Um, so those are some of the important parts of the saddle. This right here, is a breast collar and this prevents the saddle from slipping back. And I'll show you how to put this on as well. And one of the most important things, we need a good saddle pad to put on the horse. Very important to the horse's back. So this is one of the first things we're gonna be applying to the horse as we tack up. Okay, so the first important step that you wanna take before saddling your horse is just you wanna make sure there's no loose sand or mud or anything that you put your saddle pad on that's going to cause discomfort to the horse. So just make sure that that area is free of debris. Okay, that right. Anyway, so next I'm going to take the saddle pad and sometimes I go, which way does it go? I can tell because this little gap area goes towards the front of the withers. So that's going to be towards the front of the door. I'm going to put it over her back. I'm going to leave a little extra before her withers because when I put the saddle on, it tends to go back. And I love this little saddle. I bought it used. Um, I do a lot of trail riding with Jewel. It's one of my favorite things to go out on the trails in Marina and Corridor and just enjoy nature from the top of a horse. <laughs> this particular saddle is very light. Some of them are really heavy. And the proper way Depending on how strong you are and how heavy your saddle is, you can either swing it on top or you can place it on top. And I'll do the swing method. I go one, two, three, and then up and over. Just like that. And it's always a good idea to try to pull up a little bit of blanket here for room for the withers. Now I'm gonna come on to the off billet side of my saddle. And I'm gonna connect the cinch. This is called the cinch, or you can call it the girth. Either one is acceptable. So I'm gonna connect it to my off billet. Tuck it into 
the sash. And I can see it even straight my saddle pad up. This is the back. So now that they're hanging, I'm going to go to the other side. And now I'm going to connect my cinch with the latigo. This is called my latigo. So pull this down, reach under the horse, bring up the cinch. it to my latigo. Now horses, they do something kind of funny when you're um, tightening up the cinch. Some of them will hold air in their tummies so that you really can't get it as tight as you need it. You might even be able to see the look on her face as she's preparing. I guess it's like putting on a tight girdle and you don't want it any tighter than it has to be. So I will tighten it maybe two or three times at intervals just so that she relaxes. Um, Jewel has a lot of expressions and you'll notice her ears listening to me. Sometimes they'll go back and she'll let me know how annoyed she is that I'm doing this. My gilding doesn't seem to care at all, but Jewel has definite opinions and you can see her kind of telling me, I don't really like that mom. So I'm gentle and I do it a little at a time. Okay. Oh, this is a Texas tea knot, by the way. Kind of skipped a step. So I bring the latigo underneath the other side and then pull it down. Call that Texas T. And the extra that I have goes right here into the latigo keeper. And then I can put the stirrup down again. So we do want the, the cinch tight because if you don't have it tight enough, your saddle can tip and you can get into trouble. Now, not the same for the back rigging and back cinch. That you don't want extremely tight. That would not be comfortable to the horse. So you want it just like that. You might be able to go a little tighter, but you don't want pressure. And I'm just gonna hook it to the front cinch. Okay, so now we've got our saddle pretty much on and I'm just going to show you how to connect the breast collar. So that's the final step of, of getting our saddle on and tacked up, and then we're gonna to go to the bridle. So this is the breast collar, and you don't have to have a breast collar on your saddle. Uh, it comes in handy if you're going up and down hills, it'll prevent the saddle from sliding back. I'm gonna show you how to do it, just in case you decide one day you do wanna use a breast collar with your saddle. So I'm gonna put one side. to the other side and there's a ring that I can hook it on here and down below I'm going to connect this to the cinch so now if I'm going uphill and my saddle starts to slide back I've got this to prevent it from going all the way back and that's what that's for Here's the saddle set up. I'm just gonna put a bridle on her really quickly so that you can see what she looks up, looks like in full get up. And, um, and we'll see how she feels about taking her up. Joel's a very good girl. She has been around for a while. She's an older mare. And so not much bothers her. Jewel loves children too. So to hook up the bridle, I'm just gonna ask her to open her mouth gently. And I'm gonna pull up on the bridle as she does. Over the ears. Ta-da. And this is called the throat latch. This purpose, the purpose of the throat latch is let's say she rubbed the, the head stall off on a brush or something. This would keep it from coming completely off without me having a chance to fix it. Okay. So we have a tacked up horse and the last thing I'm going to do before I get on her is to check my cinch again. Let's see how much air she held in her belly. Quite a bit. There 
There we are. When I get ready to get on top of her, roll my reins over, put one foot in the strip, and it's just kind of like hopping on a bicycle. And we're ready to ride. And I hope you learned something new. Uh, want to give a shout out to all the kids out there that are loving horses and um, stay safe during COVID. Jewel says hi.